If you have approached the gateway to calmness and quietness with your purpose and thought pure, and desiring with all your power to commune, you are ready to pronounce the word that opens the gate, the power going upward and the power going downward from the divine. Then with all your might just try to allow your mind to become as still and blank as possible. The word is not some magic word. It is a vibration which is neither material nor immaterial but is rather a balancing of the two. The word is the changing of your consciousness to such a state of harmony of thought and thinking that the divine power can find a means of attunement with your own inner nature. It was through vibration that the divine created things, that all things came into being through and by the word, and the word was the audible expression of the vibratory creative power of the divine. One should not commune with God to gain power, money, or health. You need not ask for something. In so doing, you will limit your supply. Just have the deep desire to enter into communion with Him, remembering that what Jesus the Christ said, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask for them. The Divine Spirit is ever pressing against us, seeking a way to enter and manifest through us. If we will commune and attune ourselves with God so there will be an open door to enter, we will be that channel for Him to manifest through. If a person once establishes perfect communion, nothing that is disturbing or harmful in any way will ever come to their life thereafter. Man, as an individual and as a mass, has the right to establish that communion with the Divine Spirit. In so doing, they would find paths in life opening to them that they never dreamed existed. Chapter 10 Visit with the Brothers After eight months of many pleasant and inspirational subjective contacts, my cherished expectation was fulfilled. I at last had my first objective meeting alone with a being from another world. On this particular night I was reading a publication from the Brotherhood of the White Temple Incorporated when I realized I had missed a regular evening TV program. The next thing I noticed was that the light on the porch went out. I had a strange indescribable feeling and arose and went out the door to check the light bulb, reasoning that it must have burned out. A friendly, pleasing voice spoke to me from the darkness. Please do not turn the light on, my brother. Then I saw him, not too clearly in the dim light of the night, standing about twenty feet away. I walked toward him with no sense of apprehension whatsoever. He accosted me with a particular mode of hand clasp used by people of other planets, and I greeted him, inviting him to come in, and later wondered how I'd had the presence of mind to say anything at all. So overcome was I. In all the telepathic and physical contacts, the feeling these brothers and sisters arouse is always one of peace, harmony, and love, pouring forth from them, striking a responsive chord in my own being. So much is said and sung on this earth about love, but I dare say that few have known the true meaning of true love until they stand in the presence of those who are open channels for the divine love of the Creator to flow through. This kind of love is difficult for people to understand, for it is sufficient unto itself and needs nothing but a means of expression. It is a joy that knows no bounds. It defies definition, and I find myself at a total loss to adequately define it. For who can define the infinite? The potency of such divine love will temper the hearts of men and exemplify their lives, creating a new sense of fellowship in which men of all nations will build the sort of world in which the tragedies of yesterday cannot be repeated. Now, standing alone in the presence of this higher evolved brother from another planet, I perceive this profound feeling to be so very much more intense than during mental telepathy contacts that a great surge of humility welled up within me, 
and involuntarily I began to kneel before him. He took hold of my arm with a restraining hand, avowing, That is all right, my brother. Where I come from, all are equal. When I asked if I might know what planet he came from, he merely replied, Not at this time. It was only recently that it was confided to me that he and the brother who accompanied him on an ensuing visit are from a planet in our solar system, but that the planet is non-existent to the people of Earth since our astronomers have not as yet discovered it. One precise fact was revealed at this first meeting, and that is that even though our brothers are truthfully so much further advanced intellectually and spiritually, they do not express any feeling of superiority. All are equal. All are respected alike. Regardless of race, color, creed, or education, all are one with the Creator. And although, in our sense of the word, they are gods, they would not have us think or speak or, speak or bow down to them as such. I marveled at his keen extrasensory perception, for although he had not accepted my invitation to come in, he was quite aware of what I had been reading at the time of his arrival, commenting, commenting on the good literature you are reading. He also commented, no, he also commended me for keeping my faith. All too soon he announced, I must go now, my dear brother. Entreatingly I spoke, I hope to see you again soon, my brother. In a daze and with tears in my eyes, I turned away as he blended into the night. I did not even think of the darkened light bulb until some minutes after his departure and I had returned to my room when it lit up as though an unseen hand had turned it on. Since then I have had many soul-inspiring visits, each a memorial, memorable experience with these benevolent people and have especially come to know those from the planets Pluto and Jupiter. Their visits are always for a purpose and never for idle part-time. Nevertheless, do not let me give you the wrong impression, for they are naturally a happy, effervescent people. I have merited the privilege of being present at a few of their council meetings, and despite the seriousness of the moment or any slight disagreement that might arise, always the greatest of compatibility prevails with an atmosphere of peace, harmony, and goodwill, which would put to shame any meeting ever held by people of earth. For two nights a week, following this contact, I observed a craft circle overhead and move erratically as if putting on a display of maneuvers. Another week passed by and late one night, on awakening, I turned over and looking out the window, I saw a ship traveling southward not too fast. As it disappeared from view, I fervently wished that I could see it again. A few seconds later and much to my surprise, here it came back into view and hovered a moment or two. It appeared to be about as large as a dinner plate, although its actual size I would not estimate. A mental impression came through without the usual opening and closing words. We are pleased we have some sincere observers. May see you later. And indeed, a week later I was honored by a visit from the same brother who came before. And this time he was accompanied by another brother, a well-built man, too, but of taller stature probably six feet one inch in height. The iridescent material of their form-fitting garments, similar in style to our ski suits, was us unusually soft to the touch, firm but beautifully textured. The colors were what we refer to as the blue-violet shades. They were fine-looking men, with smooth, dark, suntan complexions and dark hair styled in longer length than our modern cuts. Their footwear appeared to be most sturdy, though having no openings. This night, their arrival, you will note that throughout my story I have not mentioned any place of contact, for reasons you may well understand, since there are those desirous of dominion, domination, and oppression. It, it is neither wise nor the proper time to reveal the whereabouts of any place I have met with the brothers from other planets.